Welcome to the second session on interpretation of chest x-rays. In this session, we will review common pathologies seen on chest x-rays. For the purpose of this session, I will focus on describing the key findings to understand pattern recognition, which enables to come to a diagnosis on chest x-rays. I will not be reviewing the systematic approach on each and every film for the sake of time. However, please do not forget to do this in your routine practice. In this session, as a chest x-ray comes up, I will pause for a couple of seconds, which will enable you to review findings. If required, please feel free to pause the video and look at the findings and describe it and come to a conclusion before you listen to my description and diagnosis subsequently. Here is a chest x-ray on an adult patient and if we focus on the key findings here you can see that there is reduction in the volume of the left lung compared to the right lung, which is very well aerated. The other key finding is that you can see the right hemidiaphragm very clearly, but you do not see the medial aspect of the left hemidiaphragm. You're just about able to see the left hemidiaphragm on the lateral aspect here. You can also see that the retrocardiac area does not show any lung markings and there is a straight line adjacent to the left heart border. So this is a patient who has a left lower lobe collapse which has numerous causes. In an adult patient the most common cause is likely to be an obstructive malignancy. Here is the CT scan on the same patient. You can see that there is the oblique fissure that's the descending iota and you can see the collapsed segment of a part of the left lower lobe this is case two once again you will see that the right lung is very well aerated there is loss of volume in the left lung. You can see the right hemidiaphragm very clearly, but do not see any of the left hemidiaphragm. And again, the retrocardiac area is extremely dense and does not show any lung markings. This is again a patient with left lower lobe collapse. Here is the previous chest x-ray on the same patient, which was performed a few years prior to the x-ray. And you can see lung markings in the retrocardiac area. You can see the hemidiaphragms very clearly. Let's move on to case three. In this patient, you can see a very well aerated right lung and a clear right hemidiaphragm. However, there is loss of volume in the left lung. But if you compare it to the previous x-ray, the shadowing you see overlying the left lung is not very dense. And you can see the left hemidiaphragm very clearly. What is it that you're not seeing very well here? It is the left heart border that's obscured. That suggests that the pathology is in the left upper lobe. And considering that there is loss of volume in the left lung, this is more likely to be a left upper lobe collapse. Here is the CT scan on the same patient and you can see complete collapse of the left upper lobe here and here is the left lower lobe and you can see why the left heart border is obscured because the left upper lobe is 
abutting the left heart border. This is the next patient. Once again, similar to the previous x-ray, this is a very well aerated right lung. You can see nice clear left hemidiaphragm and you can see that the left heart border is obscured. However, in comparison to the previous x-ray, this is not complete collapse of the left upper lobe, as you can see some aerated part of the left lung. This is a CT scan of the same patient, which shows a mass encasing the left pulmonary artery, causing left upper lobe collapse, and there is also a left sided pleural effusion. Let's move on to the next patient. What are the salient features you see on this chest x-ray? This is not a very well-centered x-ray. As you can see that the spinous process is closer to the left clavicle compared to the right clavicle. However, despite that, there is obvious loss of volume in the right lung with a dense shadow in the right upper zone. And you can almost see a very well demarcated border here, which is the oblique fissure, which suggests that this is a pathology in the right upper lobe and this is likely to be a right upper lobe collapse causing volume loss in the right lung. Here is the next chest x-ray. Once again, this is not a very well-centered x-ray but you can still see extensive right upper lobe shadowing with a clear demarcation of the right oblique fissure. This is again an example of right upper lobe collapse. Here is the CT scan on the same patient which shows a mass encasing the right upper lobe pulmonary artery and compressing the right upper lobe bronchus causing a right upper lobe collapse. As discussed previously, most common causes of collapse in adult patients is malignancy. However, there can be other causes for collapse. Let's move on to the next patient. What do you think are the salient features here? You can see a very well aerated left lung, very clearly demarcated left hemidiaphragm. However, the right hemidiaphragm is not seen at all. And you can also see a parallel line here coming across adjacent to the right heart border. This is a patient with a right lower lobe collapse. Let's move to the next patient. This is an example of pathology in the right upper zones. Once again, you can see that this is not a very well-centered x-ray, probably because the patient is unwell and the x-ray has been acquired in the AP position. In comparison to the previous examples you saw, there is reasonable aeration in both lungs as you can see from all the black areas in the lung. However, there is ill-defined airspace opacification in the right upper zone. And you can also see a very straight line here, which is the right side horizontal fissure, which suggests that the pathology is in the right upper lobe. And you can also see air bronchograms, which is confirming the fact that the bronchus is not completely occluded 
and there is air entry into the right upper lobe. Now this happens most commonly in consolidation. Consolidation can be caused by a variety of reasons from infection to hemorrhage to edema and depending on the patient's clinical presentation you can reach a diagnosis. This is a patient who had right upper lobe consolidation from infection. Here is the next patient. You can see shadowing in the right upper zone and if you want to be more specific this is going to be the right upper lobe as this has been demarcated by the horizontal fissure. In this patient you can just barely see some air bronchograms but the shadow appears fairly dense. This was considered to be an infection and treated and the patient was followed up with a chest x-ray which in six weeks time showed resolution of the findings to a reasonable extent but there was still a persistent opacity in the right upper lobe. This highlights a couple of issues. One is that the chest x-ray findings usually lag patient's symptoms, which means that even though the patient may be symptomatically well, there may still be residual findings on a chest x-ray. However, this patient persisted to have cough for the next few months and was followed up with another chest x-ray which now shows a complete opacification of the right upper lobe with the oblique fissure demarcated there. The fact that there was persistent symptoms and progressive signs over a period of six months in this patient, we need to investigate this further. And the most likely cause here is an obstructive tumor causing right upper lobe collapse. This needs to be investigated further with a CT scan and appropriate referral to chest physicians. Here is the next patient. As you can see, the right lung is very well aerated. There is a reasonable aeration in the left lung However, there is ill-defined opacification in the left mid and lower zones with air bronchograms. The left heart border is not obscured and the left hemidiaphragm is very well seen. Now this highlights the fact that it can be sometimes difficult to localize it to a particular segment or lobe of the lung. You can also see a thin line here on the right lung which is a normal variant and is the azygous fissure. This is left upper lobe consolidation and the likelihood that this is left upper lobe is because there is no involvement of the left hemidiaphragm and it is relatively close to the left hemi left heart border. Here is the next patient, which demonstrate a very well aerated left lung. However, if you notice, the right heart border is not clearly demarcated. If you recall the first session and correlated with the anatomy that was demonstrated, what is the lobe of the lung which is closest to the right heart border? It is the right middle lobe. So this is a patient with right middle lobe consolidation. Here is the next patient. You can see the left lung is very well aerated. There is a dense nodule here, which is likely to be a calcified granuloma. 
from previous infections. However, if you look at the right lung, there is diffuse abnormality throughout the right lung, which is more prominent in the mid, mid zones. You can also see the right middle lobe here demarcated by the horizontal fissure, which suggests that this pathology is going across different lobes and is likely to be infective in nature. Let's look at the next chest x-ray. Here is a patient with systemic symptoms of fever and cough. It shows extensive abnormality in both lungs. And if you notice carefully, there are multiple small areas of nodules seen throughout both lungs. And if you follow your systematic approach, you will also notice that there is another shadow here which should not be there. Now, this is definitely not the descending thoracic aorta. This is a paraspinal mass. And if you notice the right paratracheal border, you do not see a thin stripe as demonstrated on the normal anatomy x-rays there is a lymph node in the right paratracheal region. So this patient has extensive bilateral miliary nodules with paraspinal lymphadenopathy, which is likely to be from miliary tuberculosis and paraspinal tuberculosis. You have to be aware that paraspinal tuberculosis can involve the vertebral bodies and the spine so this patient needs urgent attention not only from the aspect of miliary tuberculosis in the lungs but also from the fact that they may be spinal cord compromise here is the next patient who again presented with systemic symptoms you can see extensive bilateral ill-defined airspace shadowing in comparison to the previous x-ray, there are not discrete nodules. These are much more coalesced and bigger areas of abnormality. Here is the CT scan on the same patient. However, the CT shows multiple areas of small nodules. This highlights the fact that CT is better at picking up subtle pathology and also will give you a better assessment of the whole lungs. This was again a patient with miliary tuberculosis. Clearly the previous x-ray demonstrates that this has progressed from the miliary stage to more of a consolidative stage. Let's move to the next patient. You can see a reasonably centered x-ray here with both lungs mildly abnormal. What you can see is bilateral perihilar shadowing. The heart size is relatively normal. In a patient who has systemic symptoms like fever or cough, you need to consider atypical infections with the distribution of perihilar airspace opacification. This generally tends to happen in immunocompromised states with patients on immunosuppressive drugs or HIV related diseases. Let's move to the next patient. What do you think is the most salient feature here? This is a very well-centered x-ray, very well aerated lungs, nice clean hemidiaphragms. But if you look at both hilar regions, they are not nice and concave and smooth. There is convexity on both sides, 
suggesting that this is hilar lymphadenopathy. Now there is a huge range of causes for bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy and you would be reasonable in discussing the differential diagnosis depending on the clinical signs and symptoms presented to you in the exams. This is the CT scan on the same patient which again demonstrates that the CT can pick up more findings than what is seen on a chest x-ray. You can see a large subcarinal lymph node which was not seen on the chest x-ray very well. You can see the lymph nodes here and the hilar lymph nodes. Here is an x-ray of a patient who presented to ED unwell. As you can see, this chest x-ray is not being done in a good inspiration and there is some loss of volume in the right lung. However, you also notice that there is a rounded opacity projected over the right high lung. So this patient progressed to have a CT scan which confirmed a right hilar mass. Here is the CT scan which demonstrates a right hilar mass which is likely to be a lung malignancy. And this is in the right upper lobe. As you can see the right horizontal fissure here. What can you see on this chest x-ray? The most obvious abnormality is a paracardiac mass in the right lower zone. However, you can see the right hemidiaphragm quite clearly and here is the right heart border. This patient again needs investigation with a CT scan. This was a right lower lobe mass. Let's move to the next patient. Here is a patient who presented acutely unwell to the emergency department. As you can see, there are multiple ECG leads. The most salient feature here is that there is complete opacification of the left hemithorax. And you can see that there is likely to be a left pleural effusion which is obscuring the left hemidiaphragm. There is some aeration of the left, up, left upper zones. It is quite difficult to be certain of pathology in these type of patients. This is unlikely to be heart failure as the right lung is completely normal. So in these patients you consider the possibility of infections or malignancy. This patient turned out to have a left lung malignancy causing a large pleural effusion. Let's move to the next patient. This is an example of a poorly penetrated chest x-ray. However, if you look closely, you can see dense opacification of the right upper and apical zones in comparison to the left upper and apical areas. It is quite difficult to evaluate the ribs here. However, when something like this presents to you, you need to think of apical malignancies and this is known as a pancreas tumor. The key to diagnosis here is obviously a CT scan and you also need to look for rib destruction which may not be apparent on a chest x-ray sometimes. Here is the CT scan on the same patient which shows extensive rib destruction caused by right apical mass.
Let's look at the next patient. What you see here again is a subcarinal mass, right paratracheal mass with loss of paratracheal stripe. Remember the paratracheal stripe should be no more than two to three millimeters in thickness and then loss of the convexity of the hilum. You will also note that the aortopulmonary window is not concave and there is convexity here, which shows that there is extensive lymphadenopathy in the mediastinum. Once again, there are extensive differential diagnoses for these and you should consider the appropriate diagnosis based on the clinical history presented to you. Let's look at the next patient. Here is a patient who presented with off. Once again, you see a large mass in the subcarinal region. The right paratracheal stripe is not well demonstrated, and there is also a mass in the right lower zone. Here is the CT scan on the same patient, which shows extensive lymphadenopathy in the paratracheal region, subcarinal region, and a mass in the right lower lobe. All these findings point towards a malignancy. You will also note there is lymphadenopathy in the axilla and supraclavicular regions. What do you see on this chest x-ray? The obvious abnormality is in the right apex. However, in comparison to the previous examples you saw, this is a very well demarcated lesion and the quality of the chest x-ray is pretty good. You do not see any rib destruction. This is a very young patient and the likelihood of this being malignant is pretty low. So these types of well demarcated lesions are caused by either pleural based benign tumors or nerve sheet tumors that arise from the intercostal nerves. Once again, confirmation of diagnosis is usually on cross-sectional imaging like CT and there may be a need to biopsy the solution. Let's move to the next patient. What are the most obvious abnormalities you see on this chest x-ray? Clearly the patient is extremely unwell, as you can see an endotracheal tube here and a central line. There is also bilateral perihilar bat wing appearance, which is airspace opacification on both sides. The left hemidiaphragm is slightly raised and the left costophrenic angle is slightly obscured. This is a typical finding of pulmonary edema with back wings appearance in a patient with heart failure. Here is another x-ray on an unwell patient. As you can see, the patient has a pacemaker and has had previous cardiac surgery, which is obvious from the fact that there are sternal sutures. Once again, there is bilateral perihilar airspace pacification, which is suggestive of heart failure. Let's move to the next patient. The most obvious abnormality here is in the right lung. The left lung appears relatively well aerated and normal. There is a right-sided pleural effusion with some airspace pacification in the right upper lobe. 
There is a wide differential for this type of presentation. It is unlikely to be heart failure as the abnormality is unilateral. There are some causes for unilateral pulmonary edema, but these are not common. This is more likely to be infective or malignant. You can also note mediastinal widening on the left side, which is likely to be from lymphadenopathy. This is the chest CT on the same patient showing extensive pleural effusion and abnormality in the right upper lobe with an element of right upper lobe collapse from a lung tumor. This is the right hemidiaphragm and you can also see a small amount of peritoneal fluid. Can you describe the typical findings seen on this chest x-ray? You can see that the heart is normal in size. You can see the descending thoracic aorta. The hyla are not widened. However, there is extensive abnormality in both lungs with horizontal lines seen particularly in the lung bases. Here is a magnified view of the same you can see these horizontal lines. Now these are curly B lines, which are effectively interstitial lines. And this happens in two conditions. One is heart failure or in disseminated malignancy caused by lymphangitis carcinomatosis. Now clearly this patient doesn't look like he has heart failure, so this is more likely to be lymphangitis carcinomatosis from disseminated malignancy. Let's move to the next patient. Here is another example of complete obscuration of the right heart border. The left heart border is slightly flattened, but otherwise normal. You can see a right-sided pleural effusion and the most likely cause here is going to be either a malignancy or an infection. What do you see on this chest x-ray? There is a right paracardiac lesion which looks fairly translucent and you can see lung markings behind it. So this could be a right lower lobe mass. However, when we performed a CT scan, this demonstrated that this was a paracardiac or pericardial fat pad which can be quite large in some patient and is of no significance. This case highlights the value of reviewing previous images. And if this patient has had a previous chest X-ray many years ago and this had not changed, this is more likely to be a benign cause. So please do not forget to review previous chest X-rays or think of previous chest X-rays when you see an abnormality. Now, there are certain conditions which tend to happen with patients' age, and they are not necessarily pathological. So here is a chest x-ray where the lungs are relatively normal. However, if you see the left side of the mediastinum looks abnormal in the fact that the descending thoracic aorta is not a straight line. So could this be an aortic aneurysm? It is possible. However, again, it is important to review previous films. And also, patients' age needs to be taken into consideration. 
this is unfolding of the thoracic aorta which is not a pathological condition but happens because of the aorta becoming more tortuous with age as you can see on the chest ct the aorta here is not coming down on a straight line and it is quite tortuous so this patient does not need any intervention for this so this patient presented to ed with cough and shortness of breath and the chest x-ray was performed the chest x-ray was interpreted as a right paratracheal mass and that the aorta was enlarged and the patient went on to have a CT. However, the CT did not demonstrate any abnormality in the right paratracheal region and the aorta was pretty normal too. This highlights the value of performing a PA chest x-ray. Once a film is very rotated, it can be quite difficult to comment on the mediastinum and size of heart and the iota. As you can see here, the spinous process is quite close to the medial aspect of the left clavicle, whereas the medial aspect of the right side of the clavicle is further away, which suggests that this is a very rotated film. So be cautious of over-interpreting films which are not adequately centered. And once again, in these situations, please review previous films, which sometimes could be fairly recent and performed when the patient was well. And if that chest x-ray was normal in the last week or two, it is unlikely that the patient would have developed a tumor within a week. Let's move on to some different types of pathology. What do you think is happening here? The right lung is relatively normal. However, you do not see any lung markings whatsoever on the left side. And there is flattening of the left hemidiaphragm. And you can see that the left lung is completely collapsed here. So this is a large pneumothorax, which is probably proceeding towards becoming a tension pneumothorax but there is still no deviation of the mediastinum or trachea to the right but be cautious of this because tension pneumothorax tends to develop very quickly and even though there are not many signs of tension pneumothorax here this patient needs urgent intervention Here is the same patient where a chest strain has been placed and you can see that the hemidiaphragm is starting to come back up and this is a further follow-up on the same patient where the pneumothorax is almost resolved and the left lung is well aerated now. You can see some evidence of surgical emphysema which is caused by insertion of the chest strain. What do you see on this chest x-ray? Once again, you see that there is a large pneumothorax and you can see the lung marking coming up to this line. There is some deviation of the trachea to the left. There isn't complete flattening of the right hemidiaphragm. But once again, be wary of these pneumothorax is developing into tension pneumothorax because this is a medical emergency and needs urgent treatment. Here is a patient who presented to us after a fall. As you can see, the chest x-ray has been performed with the patient in the AP position, the patient has had previous surgery. There is not much going on in the lungs. However, if you compare the ribs on both sides, there is an abnormality on the left side. The right rib 
looks nice and smooth and there is a little interruption here on the ribs on the left side and if you magnify it you can see that there are rib fractures it is important to look for pneumothorax in these patients which can be quite small and difficult to detect what do you see on this chest x-ray this looks essentially normal so the trachea is in the midline the heart looks normal hemidiaphragms are normal both lungs look very well aerated and normal so you really do not see any lung pathology and that is why it is important to review the clinical history this patient presented to us after a road traffic accident and if you look closely this patient has a scapular fracture this is a magnified view of this showing the scapular fracture now it's unlikely you will be shown such a tricky film in your exams but it is important to remember that you need to review every structure that's visible on the chest x-ray and correlate it with the patient's signs and symptoms never interpret imaging on its own let's move on to some pathology that is outside the lungs here is an example of a patient who presented with acute abdominal pain and the most obvious finding here is air under the hemidiaphragms now this is once again a surgical emergency uh, from perforated viscous causing free air under the diaphragm Here is another patient who presented with acute abdominal symptoms. This is a grossly abnormal looking chest x-ray with a large hollow viscous which is severely distended in the mediastinum. Now this patient had long-standing esophageal distension but what you can also see is air under the hemidiaphragm here from a perforated viscous so once again this is a surgical emergency this is the same patient's abdominal x-ray which shows extensive pockets of free air in the abdomen and air under the hemidiaphragm from the hollow viscous perforation there are also multiple loops of dilated small bowel seen Here is a more drastic example where there is extensive free air under both hemidiaphragms. Please remember that not all patients will have such extensive air and it can be quite subtle and it is important to look under the hemidiaphragm for air to exclude perforation. Here is another example of a patient who is relatively well. This chest x-ray was done for a cough. Patient did not have any intra-abdominal symptoms. However, you do see that there is air under the hemidiaphragm on the right side. And similar to the previous chest x-rays of patients we discussed where not all findings are pathological, this is a similar condition and again highlights the value of reviewing previous x-rays when we reviewed the previous x-rays on this patient this air under the hemidiaphragm has been present for many years this is a condition called Kiladiati syndrome where there is colonic interposition between the liver and the diaphragm if you have a solitary chest x-ray it can be quite difficult to diagnose but if there is so much free air under the diaphragm the patient is likely to be symptomatic however you need further imaging to confirm this uh, 
Now let's look at the last case for the session. What do you think is the most salient feature on this x-ray? Once again, this shows a very well centered trachea, very well aerated lungs, clean hemidiaphragms, normal heart size, pretty normal looking chest x-ray. I'm going to end this session with this chest x-ray to highlight the value of a systematic approach. If you look at the side marker here, the right sided side marker is placed on the left side. So there are two issues here. Has the side marker been placed correctly? And if the side marker has been placed correctly, what is the diagnosis? This is a patient with dextrocardia. So let's just quickly summarize this session. Please do not forget a systematic approach even though I have just talked about the salient features on the x-rays shown on this session. Do not forget to describe the abnormality because that enables you to reach the diagnosis in a more logical fashion. Remember that pattern recognition is the key to diagnosis in radiology. Never forget previous imaging investigations because that can give you many clues to the current diagnosis and to decide if the patient requires further imaging. Always think of next steps for further diagnosis and management. And last but not least, always treat the patient and not the imaging. Always review patient's symptoms and signs and treat appropriately and use imaging as a guidance and in conjunction to your clinical findings. Thank you for listening.